I just went to Mali's with my best friend Johnny Rubinetti, and whenever I go to an Asian place of any kind like that, I always get some rice to go because it makes for an amazing stir fry. My basic stir fry is amazingly simple. So I, here's my rice that I got from Mali's, um, and I always have an egg, and I always have soy sauce. In this case, I'm using tamari, which is a, like a soy sauce. It's made a little bit differently, so it has no wheat in the way they make it. They make it from uh, miso paste instead of from soybeans, wheat, and other grains. So because of that, uh, gluten people, low, you know, non-gluten people like using tamari. Me, I like using tamari because it has a, a kind of a lighter flavor than soy sauce does. All right, so that's it, right? You can just you fry some rice, scramble an egg, and you use some tamari, and you're basically there. I always use canned peas. The canned pea has a unique flavor that I really like in my stir-fried more so than the fresh. Um, and then this. This is Foster Farms chicken breast strips. I love this chicken. I have used it in every, every possible Mexican thing, like enchiladas, tacos, burritos, whatever. But my favorite thing to do is just make some buttery noodles and then add this chicken to it. Uh, one tip on the buttery noodles is that I like to add chicken bouillon to my buttery noodles instead of salt or, you know, just a little bit of salt, but mostly chicken bouillon. And now I have this chickeny noodle with these amazing strips in it. Simplest dish in the whole wide world. I've served, I've served it to people after bar hopping and they are in love with this dish. You can also add it to chicken stock, etc. By the way, this is not my favorite way to do it. So this, it makes great bouillon based, uh, like, a, like a consomme. If I want to make a consomme, this is my favorite thing to use. I got this because I couldn't find what I usually use, which is Wiley's Chicken Granules. So I also have learned that they still sell that. They don't have it at my fries anymore either. So I'm going to have to frack those down because I like them a lot better for using as a seasoning. So this is great for making a, um, a consomme, but to use it as a seasoning, that uh, Weiler's um, chicken granule seems to work the best. So the good news is I always have eggs, soy sauce of some kind, the canned peas, I keep those in my pantry, and bouillon once I get that prepared. I always have these things so I can always make a stir fry. This is an easy pickup. And by the way, I happen to have some fresh ginger left over from... Uh, also going to Molly's probably, uh, or no, so this is going from raw sushi, sorry about that. And then uh, I, you know, I always have garlic, so you can add that. I picked up some uh, scallions when I picked up the, the chicken strips, just to have one little note of fresh brightness in there. Uh, but bottom line, one, two, three, four, five. So if you get some rice to go, you already have these four things, you're going to be able to make yourself a nice little fried rice. Juice it up with a few enhancers. Okay, my ingredients are prepped up. You can see here my chicken is nice and diced up. It was in strips. Um, and my, I said fresh ginger. It's actually, obviously, it's pickled ginger. Um, and then I have my scallions. And there are a number of vegetables that work best if you treat them like two vegetables. Uh, for example, if you're doing uh, rainbow shard, you want to do the stems separately from the leaves. Well, it's also true for scallions. So the greens, they take a lot less heat. Um, whereas the whites, they love to be, you know, sa sauteed. So I'm going to saute those up, add these last. Stir fry things go really fast, so it's nice to have everything laid out and ready to go and grabbable. Especially if you're trying to film it and do everything with one hand, we'll see how well that goes. Um, first in goes the oil. Then I'm going to sauté up the scallions. Shortly after that, the ginger, the chicken, and then I like to add the garlic after the chicken's there because otherwise the garlic will scorch too quickly. Followed by the rice and then the seasoning, which is my chicken bouillon. I'll also add pepper and maybe a little salt. Uh, then my peas. Finally, my scallion greens, I'll scramble an egg, I'll season it all with some soy sauce, so I'll probably will skip that salt, and that will be what hopefully goes down. All right, time to buckle my seatbelt. All right, I decided if ever I was going to use my tripod, <laughs> this might be the time. All right, so first the oil. Okay, smoking, but not exactly catching on fire. That's a good start. In goes the scallion. woo -wee. Okay, now the ginger. You can see it's already burning. So cool. High heat cooking. Okay, now the chicken. Don't want to waste any of that. Okay. Ooh, that ginger smells really cool. I've never used um, the leftover pickled ginger from a sushi restaurant before. Now that I got some stuff in there, it's slowing down a little bit because the chicken was quite cold. Okay, after this, we'll do the rice. Now, sometimes I'll do the rice first so I get a nice little crisp on it. The chicken can prevent that. But if you just push stuff to the side, you're good to go. In goes the rice. All 
right, I'm letting the rice um, get some texture on it there, and I'm hitting it with some pepper. And I'm going to forego salt because of the soy sauce, the canned peas, and the chicken bouillon. Boom. Okay. And no, no uh, salt, but let's add a little bit of soy sauce now. We'll add some more later. Okay. Chicken's all on the edges. Now it's been kind of getting its texture on it. Time to stir fry. Now, garlic burns so easily. A lot of stir fry places, I see them put it right into the oil, but gosh, I just think it burns so quickly. I'm adding it now. I gotta make sure it stirs in real nicely and starts to cook up a little bit. That is coming along nicely. Time for the canned peas. We're getting to the end of it now. I'm gonna add some of these green, um, uh, sorry, the scallion tops. And I don't need all these. I'll use it a little bit for the garnish. And then I'll freeze the rest, maybe make some scrambled eggs. Okay, final stretch is here. Time to scramble in that egg. Oh, by the way, I remembered I do like to add a little heat to mine, so I'm gonna add some red pepper flakes. That'll just kick up the heat level a little bit. And I have the egg ready to go so that I don't have to mess with cracking it up. But first, let's make ourselves a nice hole. Perfect. Sometimes I use two eggs. Today I just chose one. Maybe two would have been better. I like a nice eggy, um, a nice eggy product. Okay. Final touch is the soy sauce. This is a 50% reduced sodium. I actually like the flavor. I did a blind taste test once uh, where I had the low, so the light sodium and the regular. And everybody who participated felt that the light had a um, had a more soy-like taste. So it was kind of cool. Well, my friends, there is my finished product. My little own homemade stir-fry. Hopefully you saw how easy it was. And the next time you're at a Chinese restaurant, Thai food restaurant, anyone that gives you a big old bowl of rice, Indian restaurant. Oh, I've done it with basmati rice. Works great. It's a completely different play flavor profile, but it, it's really fun. So here's to... Uh, Easy stir fries. Hmm. The fresh scallion is a really nice touch. I don't usually do that, so it's kind of fun for me to have it. Um, the bouillon, I still like it a lot. It's a little different, but it's good. Uh, the chicken is really the masterpiece. This, I just love this chicken that they make for me. So anyway, um, oh, ginger. I totally taste the ginger in this. I usually might use a ginger powder. Also, you can freeze ginger and then grate it, and it grates just as easily frozen as it does raw. So if you, if you want, always have fresh ginger in your freezer. Just grate that in. Beautiful touch to this as well. Anyway, hope you guys try making your own stir fries and let me know if you do it.